Okay, uh, hi, welcome to the first of three lessons on correlation for S1. Um, I like this topic, which is to say I don't actually like it, but I like it because it, um, it's easy. You ought to be able to get a lot of marks on this topic if you take care, okay, and you avoid making careless mistakes. Um, the first part of it is all about scatter diagrams, and this is nice because you did these to death at GCSE, you know all about these. Um, it says here they show visually the relationship between two variables i.e. the correlation. And uh, there's a fine example here uh, illustrating the correlation between owning cats and being struck by lightning. And um, actually this makes a serious point, apart from being a joke, um, which is that there can be correlation between two, um, between two variables and it can be meaningless. It doesn't have to imply a relationship and you have to bear that in mind. Okay, so the first part is just going to be about looking at scatter diagrams and sort of interpreting what they mean based on what they look like. And it's fairly straightforward, and I'm sure you'll remember this. Um, this one here, uh, what type of correlation is that? I'm sure you're already thinking it's a positive. And um, that's really just because as the height increases, the weight increases. Um, so that's a positive correlation, and if there's a positive correlation, it means you could draw, if you wanted, a straight line, a line of best fit, um, and it would uh, it would fit the data fairly well. This one here, um, there's not a lot going on here, as far as I can tell. Um, this dude got uh, quite a high math mark and did very poorly in English, um, but this person here got a very poor math mark and a very poor English mark. So increase in the math mark made, you know has very little relationship, very little bearing on the change in an English mark. Um, and you can't see it as a straight line, basically. So for this we say there's either no correlation um, or we'd say there's zero correlation. Um, lastly, this one here, um, I'm sure you're thinking this already, this is a negative correlation. Okay, That basically means as one um, variable increases, the other one decreases, and it sort of stands to reason that um, when you get more rain, you're likely to have less sunshine. So anything that's sloping downward to the right, you would describe as negative correlation. Um, so here's a question that you might be asked to answer. Um, we're given uh, a set of data um, from a study which looked at population density, so the number of people in a given unit of area, and how that depended on the distance from the center of the city in kilometers. Um, and the results are given there, and they've already been plotted in uh, this scatter diagram here. It says that these ones have been omitted, and the first thing that we're going to do is, is to plot those. But before I do that, you just have to, just want to make you aware that when you've to have data that's suitable for a scatter diagram, it needs to be bivariate data, which we'll you'll say more about later, but that just means it comes in pairs. Okay, so this 0 0.6, that corresponds to this 50. Okay, so a particular place that they looked at that was 0 0.6 kilometers from the city centre had a population density of 50. We cannot just take this list of distances and this list of population densities and just look at them separately um, or if they're given to us just as two separate lists that will be meaningless they have to come as pairs um, okay so <coughs> we're going to plot this and we're going to complete the diagram so we need to do g h i and j so here for g 1.8 kilometers from the center 25 people per hectare so down to our graph 1.8 that's here 25 uh, let's see that's here that's a little bit tricky because it's kind of between points on the grid um, but we plot that as accurately as we can. H, 3.4 kilometers, 8 people per hectare. So 3.4, that's here. Coming up to, oh, gone too far. That's 10, so that there is 8. Um, for I, 4.0 kilometers, 16 is the population density. So 4 is here. I'm at 10, 12, 14, 16. So that's that one. And finally, J, 0.9. 38, so 0 0.9 is down here, and 38, well that's 40, so 38 is there. <coughs> okay, so that's plotting. Plotting is fairly straightforward, you just have to be as accurate as you can, um, and there shouldn't be any problems there. Now this is the type of question you might be asked to describe the type of correlation, and afterwards we're going to interpret the correlation. 
Now, if it had said describe the relationship, we might say something different. But when it says describe the correlation, that's thinking of the types of correlation that we've just seen, negative, positive, or, or zero correlation. So in this case, clearly, as the distance increases, the population density decreases, it's sloping down to the right. So we can simply say it's a negative, oops, need an I there, negative correlation. Okay, um, if we wanted to make it a little bit more uh, wordy, put it into a sentence, we could just say that the distance from the center um, and the population density are negatively correlated. Interpret the correlation, however, that's, that, does, that requires more than just one word. It requires us to describe, as I did just a minute ago, really, what, what the relationship means. So as you get further from the center, the population density decreases. So I'll probably write it like this. As distance from the center increases, population density decreases. Simple as that. But it's about knowing what the examiner wants to see um, for the two different types of question there. Okay. Um, so this, just on the back of your sheet, if you turn over your sheet, you've got three diagrams here. Um, this is just an alternative way of, uh, I guess, uh, looking at scatter diagrams and how you can tell uh, what kind of correlation is there. Now in this case, looking at that, that's pretty obvious. Okay, that's a positive correlation. Um, but if you're not sure, if it's more spread out and you're not sure whether there's a correlation there or not, and you're just looking at the diagram, um, one thing that you can do is, let's say, okay, I'll give my axes labels here, they should have labels, these are my x and y axes. Okay, we've got uh, bivariate data x and y. Um, if you worked out the mean of all the x values that you found, okay, so call that x bar, and we did the same for y. Um, what you can do is you can plot um, straight lines on your graph, so a horizontal line at y bar and a vertical line at x bar. This means that they'll meet in the middle at the point x bar, y bar. And um, well, let's just do that sneakily. Um, so done that, and um, well, you can see there that clearly most of the points lie either in this top right quadrant or bottom left quadrant. So even if it were not quite so clear a relationship, you could count up the number of points in the four quadrants. And if you've got significantly more in top right and bottom left, then you could that would be enough for you to say it's a positive correlation. So for positive correlation, we'd say most points um, would be found either top right or bottom left. For negative correlation, um, you guys are smart, so I reckon you can figure this out for yourselves. So just pause the uh, video for a moment and um, draw on the lines like above, and then just note down where the points ought to be for a negative correlation. Okay, so hopefully, if you did pause it and go away and do it, you've got something a little bit like that. Um, oh, hang on a second. I meant like that, so you've got axis labels as well. So if you find that most of the points are either in the top left quadrant or bottom right quadrant, then chances are you're looking at a negative correlation. Um, finally, if there's no correlation, as you can kind of see there probably isn't here, if you were to plot those lines, uh, x bar and y bar, um, when you look at it, there's not really anything obvious there as a pattern. Um, the points seem to be fairly evenly distributed. There's only one here, but there's three in this quadrant, three in this quadrant, three in this quadrant, um, and that suggests that there is no correlation. So in that case, we would say that the points um, are roughly evenly distributed. Um, and that's the end of this lesson. See you in lesson two.